So starting this thing off, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do? <laughs> I always have trouble with this question, actually. <laughs> uh, what do I do? I meet people. I think is probably the simplest way to describe what I do is to deeply meet someone. Mm. Um, that would be the shortest answer I could possibly get. Okay. Uh, Let me ask you this then. Okay. What do people meet you for? Uh, I would say they <laughs> I kind of maybe a, a funny answer, but uh, to meet themselves, actually. <laughs> mm. That's a good it's, answer. Like to walk a while together, I find, and that walking alongside, um, we become a mirror of each other. Mm. And so in that mirror, you sort of see yourself clearer. I see myself clearer. They see them themselves clearer. So yeah, it's a meeting, I think, is, is fundamentally uh, how I would describe all of this. Mm. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. So it's to shed light on the fundamental reality of the other person, like to be just in simple presence with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I find that when there is that meeting, actually the walls between me and other come down and vice versa. And actually at that point, it's just a meeting. It's mm. just a seeing. Uh, it's just, I mean, to use sort of maybe popular language, it's just the self. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So in other words, you're just hanging out with people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. But yeah. I suspect it's uh, a different sort of hanging out than, you know, classical hanging out at the bar, maybe. Um, you know, the subject yeah. matter may be a little different, so... <laughs> Could we go get into what you talk about, maybe? Like what you teach or yeah. how you guide in these meetings? Yeah. So I'd say that my work primarily sort of sits into two categories. Um, it's It sits in the category of the silent work that I do and into the category of the more satsang, which is, I think, what you're sort of alluding to there yeah. in terms of what we talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, broadly speaking, I think the biggest thing that I've come to see is how much of ourselves is excluded in our experience. And so a lot of what I speak about is about folding it all into the inclusion of it all. And in that, you see that which you are essentially also that which you are temporarily, that which is, mm. you know, what we would traditionally call this life. But to me, who and what we are goes so much deeper than that. And there's so much more fundamental than the changeability of what we appear to be, at least. Mm -hmm. mm. So I think it's really about coming to understand what our essential nature is and in that to see that all is included within that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it that we have to recognize what we're not first in order to realize our infinite nature that we are? I think that to me is maybe one of the first stages of awakening is to first recognize, oh, hang on a second. I'm, I'm not just this mind body. And so it sort of starts to look a little bit like a negation to start with mm. in my experience of working with people and also my own experience, this sort of recognition of, oh, okay, what I am is not this, not that. Yeah, I'm sure you've run into the term neti neti many, many times over, but it's mm -hmm. a little bit akin to that. Um, but I don't see that as, quotes the end point. I see that as the beginning point in many ways to recognize that there's something prior to this mind-body experience. But ultimately, I don't think it's separate. I don't think that... Uh, the approach of I'm not this is um, a final recognition, let's say. I think mm. that that's just a, a bus stop, let's say. <laughs> what is uh, 
the first stop, you know, how would you say we even get on this wavelength of recognition? Um, in my eyes, it's something that gets planted in the heart. And I don't think anyone chooses to be on the spiritual path of awakening. I don't think anyone, well, if you really want to get into it, I don't think anyone chooses anything, but maybe that's a, that's a, a bigger topic. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel that uh, there's a seed that's planted in our heart. And uh, from that, everything that we find ourselves doing, as in any seeking, any meditation, any inquiry, any anything at that point is just a symptom of sort of consciousness waking up to itself, our mm -hmm. true nature waking up to itself. So I, I don't think uh, we choose this path. I think it chooses us. I think mm -hmm. uh, my, my view at least is that those that find themselves sort of deeply inquiring into the nature of reality tend to... Uh, do so through I would say a calling yeah yeah I feel that um so in that way is it pretty much inevitable that we're all going to be able to recognize and remember our true nature someday I think that's the nature of life is to to move more towards that uh, mm -hmm. As to time scales, well, we we tend to think of time scales in terms of very human uh, time scales. But I'm, uh, from my perspective, it doesn't necessarily mean that this this uh, iteration of uh, our life uh, necessarily, I would say, is awakening is for everyone. Um, but I think, given the fullness of time, mm -hmm. yes. Mm. What a world it will be, huh? <laughs> <laughs> mm. It would be like an alien world. It would be completely different. It would be very different. Yeah, that's what I like to um, try to talk about is uh, the differences that come about once we do become aware. You know, once we do see that we are a little more than just the comings and goings of the body, the pleasures and aversions. Um so what do you say, I know it's hard to generalize, we're speaking generalities here, but if we could try, <laughs> what do you say changes in us once we do see this and live on that wavelength? Maybe not always, but once we start to get the inkling of our true nature, how do our behaviors change? Like, how does our life change? Like, I know we see, we get the glimpse, but from that seeing, is there a difference of will that comes about in our life? Gosh, that is a big question. I'm um, <laughs> sorry, I'm hitting you with the big ones right away. No, that's fine. That's totally <laughs> fine. I'm up for it. Um, <laughs> I think everything changes. Hmm. And yet, paradoxically, and that's what I love about all of this so much, is there's such a paradox to it all. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, life is life. You know, you still have bills to pay. You still have you know, in, in human interactions, relationships, yeah. you know, life still is. Chop wood, carry water, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I would say the relationship to that changes entirely. Yeah. And in that, it's, it's not just a mental change. It's on all levels. That's been my experience, at least. Um, gosh, so much has changed. It's hard to, to even put into words. Um, For me, the initial stages of that was like the lid coming off. And, and I think that's why I speak about inclusion so much, because I, in coming to all of this, I realized how much of myself was sort of chopped up and rejected and excluded. And so that was, for me, one of the biggest changes was uh, suddenly room for it all. And that means good, bad, ugly, all. Yeah. Um, but there wasn't the same suffering of it, as in there was a there was a space for it. There was a a, a tenderness, an openness in my heart for yeah. all that I am, and therefore all that this is, all that others are, all that the world is. And so I think that was probably one of the biggest changes that I would say happens in to myself. But I see it daily with the people I work with, the capacity to 
to meet people and to meet themselves is just, uh, it changes your life. It really does change your life because, and not in the way that you think it will, in that um, there's this big imagination. I was certainly um, guilty of this myself that uh, awakening somehow is the fix for it all, that somehow you're going to become this perfect person and it's all going to be good and you're going to be infinitely compassionate and, you know, all of these ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, another paradox, on one level it's true, but on another level it's not how the mind thinks it will come about because it's actually the very opposite. It's Mm -hmm. like the way I would describe it is like the idea the mind's idea of that is almost like a gilded cage, just sort of sat in a gilded cage. Yeah, I'm all good. Everything's peaceful. Everything's sweet and lovely and kind and soft and compassionate. But it's like everything else outside of the cage is like, nope, we're not going there. Mm. And and actually, I think the opposite is true of the awakening, is it's the freedom to, to embrace and uh, meet it all, to be it all. And that's quite a different yeah. lived reality i mean like anger for instance like i never met anger before i was so afraid of anger I was so like repressed in terms of anger and to my much to my sort of surprise uh anger uh, has become a really beautiful flavor that i didn't ever realize um would be there and and i'm not i don't mean it's the power of anger, what's underneath the anger, the, the, the vibrancy, the power of life, all of these things, grief, grief, anger, all of them I've really come to see are just beautiful expressions of our humanity. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, I can't picture you angry. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that one, but yeah. <laughs> no, it happens. <laughs> so essentially what you're saying is... Um, it's a path of least resistance to the goings on of the humanly condition. And that resistance, would you say is essentially what suffering is, is we resist all the, yeah. yeah, All the mental stuff. So you've got, Mm -hmm. you've got what is, and you've got your idea of what you think should be and where there's like a gap, there's where you suffer. And Mm -hmm. so the resistance to what is for me is a, a, a major, major, major part, if not the entirety of suffering comes mm. from that, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big switch for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh. In, in that, um, you know, frictionless living, you could say, is there a different response to the moment? Maybe less of a reactionary um action taken in more of like a um what's the word i'm looking for discernment like a solid discernment that comes about so maybe yeah you might still get angry but maybe not as much or maybe uh, just a different way to treat life and especially others in your life that comes about from that i think it's the word i would use is authentic it's real it's Mm -hmm. true it's not overblown because it's coming from a place of sort of shadow or a place of not not being at home with that response. I got you. Um, I would say there's clarity. You don't mm-hmm. lose clarity. You know, and often, you know, you can have these big reactions. And, and the thing with big reactions is often there's a lot of lack of clarity there. You sort of you're taken over. It's almost like uh, there's lack of awareness there. The, the, the light... Uh, is veiled somewhat by uh, the person, the ego, the response, the yeah. reactivity to life. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, honesty is probably, it's like there's a raw honesty of reactions. Um, and in that clarity, it's not, yeah, it's true. I guess that's the word I would use. It's, it's truer. It feels more authentic. It feels more just honest. honest. That's the response. Yeah. Honest, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. This brings up the idea of Neem Karoli Baba. He told Ramdas to love everyone and, secondly, to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Tell the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. 
But Sometimes the truth hurts. Yeah, you got to go with the truth. Yeah. Hmm. I think where the truth is seated in the heart or comes from the heart, there's where you you have this beautiful marriage of love, wisdom, and truth there. Yeah. So truth on its own, I think, can be very damaging. But where it is that sort of union of truth and love, let's say, mm. this to me uh, is where I'd say clarity is really quite something else. Yeah. Oh, this is good. This is already a good talk. <laughs> Do you feel like um, from that, you know, spaciousness is just a natural flowing of love that comes about? Do you just feel naturally loving toward other people and yourself and the world, everything? Like it just comes, comes mm -hmm. about? Not necessarily. I think yes. Ultimately, yes, mm -hmm. is, would be my answer. But I don't think it, it's like a switch that gets flipped on. Um, it wasn't for me anyway. Some people it is. That's that's their path. That's their way. For me, um, I had to work through a lot of trauma and a lot of conditioning before that love and that joy and that tenderness of life really came about. And I would describe this. You know, everyone talk is very focused on like sort of the ascent model, the sort of the transcendent model. Um, but to me the maturity of all of this looks much more like a descent. So it's like a coming back down out of the head, into the heart, into mm -hmm. the body, into the guts of life, into the humanity. It's like that, that light of consciousness is, is sort of woken up within ourselves. That recognition is like, ah, there's that revelation of, oh, okay, I'm not just this, this mind body. I'm actually that consciousness, that awareness, whatever word we want to use, beingness, divinity, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me where, the, and there was a, there's, there is just a certain amount of love that's always there within all of us. We all, whether it's a very human love or it's that transcendent divine love, it's, it's there. It's at the heart of who and what we are. But I think it can be really, really covered over, like really veiled. And um, it's actually someone asked me this just yesterday, whether I've always been this sort of loving person. And, and yeah, maybe that could say um, compassionate, those kind of things as a person. But I wonder how much of it was actually uh, a response to life, a sort of uh, trying to stay safe with life. Because what I see now and what I experience now is a different kind of love. Mm. Um, and that has been through this sort of what I would call this descent into the heart. Uh, and that didn't happen immediately, actually. It's like I had to work through all the crap first. I had to, and I had a lot. I had a lot to work through. Those first few years were, you know, pretty intense, pretty dicey. Um, I, I remember asking, you know, all these teachers talk about bliss and love and all this. And I'm like, where's the bliss? I don't, I'm not feeling blissful right now. I was yeah. feeling peaceful. I was feeling content. I was feeling empty. I was feeling silent. I was feeling quiet. All of these things, yes. But the love, the joy, the bliss, that didn't come online for me, at least until a few years, quite a few years in, actually. Mm. Um, but it and it and I sense that there's even there's further to go in that in those terms. Mm. I see it. I see it even week to week. I see it. I see the difference. You know, me sat here today is quite different from me sat there a couple of months ago. Even so, so who knows? I don't know. But I, mm. I can I can certainly speak what has happened so far. Yeah. And yeah, to to short answer, it didn't come about automatically for me. Mm, yeah, I get that for sure. Um, I think the journey of love never ends, to be honest with you. And that's the yeah. beauty of it. I we agree. just continually, every day, renewing ourselves into this divine love, becoming a loving being. And you're right, Rome wasn't built in a day. It doesn't happen overnight. But I think, um, this is a cliche, but the journey is the destination in that regard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
It's to fall in love with life. It's to fall in love with yourself. Yeah. And that, that's that been an unexpected journey for me on, in all of this. I wasn't, I wasn't courting that. I wasn't aware that that was, of course, everyone wants that, but it's, I didn't realize the magnitude of that part of this journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fall in love with life. Yeah. Continually. Yeah. It's like we're in a love affair with life, with God. Yeah. <laughs> and it's complicated. Yeah. It's a complicated one. <laughs> I mean, you can say that, I mean, but it's also very simple too. At the same yeah, time. I was gonna say. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's both. Like you said, I guess a paradox. Yeah. Because I guess, well, what's the integration look like? You know, the, the descent to you. Like you said, mm -hmm. it was, I guess, a little rocky. What does that look like in terms of practice? How did that come about in your life to descend yeah. into the heart and integrate it into your life? For me. The, I think the practice, broadly speaking, and it wasn't really a practice because at that point, there's no one doing it. It's just what's happening. It's just the unfold. It's like the, the rosebud sort of unfolding, unfurling its petals. It's not really a doing. It's just, it is just a process that's happening. But if I had to describe it in terms of a practice, it would be the practice of surrender. Mm. And that to me has been a big part of my life has been a continual breaking open to the moment, continual surrender to the moment. Yeah. And in that it's, it's like everything that was sort of blossoming up into consciousness, into awareness um, was being met deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and through this process, it's like I had to go to such depths because there was so much that, that I wasn't able to look at before. It's like my ego had sort of protected me sufficiently that there was so much buried in there. That um, yeah, I would say it was it was it was a constant surrendering to, particularly to the felt experience. You know, um, there came a point where my mind was very empty, but I was still had a lot that was sort of emotionally there, I guess, but even deeper than that, somatically, they have felt this energetically sort of, I don't know, I even have to describe it, but it's like, it was like constantly peeling back these layers. Mm -hmm. um, and it was not like a pulling apart. It was a sinking into, and that's why I use the word surrender. It was like life, con like, constantly asking me to sink deeper and deeper and deeper. So you start out on the mind level, but actually you traverse through the emotions and through the sensations and into the energetic realms and beyond. And so I think, you know, I didn't have guidance of someone telling me I needed to do this. This was just literally life, like guiding me in each mm -hmm. and every moment. And I, it became yeah, I guess a practice would be a good way to describe it, but it was really just about meeting myself deeper mm. and deeper and deeper. And it, it was quite intense. It can be still quite intense when something sort of bubbles up to the surface to be met. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I got like an imagery of something pulling you in on a rope yes. slowly. Yes. Come on, come on in. Yes. Come back home. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like a fishing weight. That's the way I, I always describe it. It's like there's this fishing weight sort of yeah. pulling you into the depths of the ocean. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I feel as though, I think we said this at the beginning, but all of us are kind of have that, that pull, that pull back. It might not be in this lifetime, but I think just being yeah. here is that pull back, like, come on. No matter what happens every day, it's that chance to come back home. And there's, there's something pulling us back to ourselves, essentially. Yeah. It's ourself pulling ourselves back. <laughs> back home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Even when we think we're going in the opposite direction, even. Or even when we think we are going in the right direction, but somehow it doesn't feel like we're going in the right direction. I feel that um, everything that happens to us and I stand by this quite well, and maybe one day I'll go, what was I thinking? But <laughs> I really do stand by that there's there's no mistakes. Mm. Yeah. That everything that happens to us, even 
seeming dead ends, even things that, you know, we wouldn't wish upon ourselves or others even, you know, they teach us wisdom. They reveal something of life to us. And yes, sometimes they can be hard lessons. Sometimes they can be devastating lessons. But there's such wisdom in life. There's such unending wisdom in everything that we experience, I feel. Mm-hmm. And it's really our challenge to to not judge it too prematurely. Mm-hmm. And to surrender. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about surrender. It yeah. is. Wow. Yeah, I feel like <clears throat> that's a huge dawning or revelation that came in for me. And I'm pretty sure if anyone's listening to this, they probably heard it before. It's the switch of why is this happening to me to how is this happening for me? Beautiful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can see that in every moment, even in the darkest ones. Yeah. That's the key. How is this happening for me? Right? Yeah. It might seem tough, that's for sure, but I, it, it is true. And it's easy to say now, for sure, we're in our comfortable homes. But <laughs> I think that is the gist of this whole thing, this whole path, this pathless path is to be able to resonate at that wavelength of everything is for me, for my growth, for my betterment of experience. I don't know, what do you want to call it? Um, just to find joy, this joy, bliss, peace, happiness, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's all for that. And it might not seem like it in the moment, but I guess with enough introspection and enough surrender, one can see that. Yeah, we don't always see it in the moment. And yeah. and it's really hard when, you know, you meet someone who is really um, going through it or your, yourself is going through it. Yeah. Um, these sort of ideas seem like a luxury, I would say. Yeah, right. At that moment. And what I say to that is um, it doesn't, it, you might not see it necessarily in that moment, but if you look back over your life and you mm. see that there was no mistake in any of it, mm-hmm. you see how each unfolding of each experience led to a greater wisdom, led to a greater knowingness of yourself. And that's precious. That's not anything to be turned away from. Mm -hmm. And so it's like as you go further and further into life with this recognition, this to me holds you in those times of darkness. And some would call that faith. It's like you you Mm -hmm. you have that faith lit in your heart that that knows even as small as that knowingness might be, but has this sense of. life is guiding me through this life is guiding me through this maybe inelegantly maybe messily Mm. maybe not the way i imagined it to be but life is guiding me through this and and through this i will come to know myself i'll come to know what what life is more and more what i am more and more and that's the way in which i like the light of who we are as i feel is revealed is through our experiences sometimes through our darkest experiences actually it's like we ha- we find in those darkest moments we find the light that we are that shines that lights up the corners of those dark rooms and goes oh my gosh what are we what are we working with here today but it's that it's it's we are that light we are that sort of awareness that light penetrating into all the darkest corners and so once you see that, you see, ah, okay, this is this is nothing to be afraid of. This is nothing to um, shy away from, but this is something to really embrace and welcome into my heart. Well said. Oh. I don't even know where to go from that one. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, true faith. True faith. Yeah. yeah. Not blind faith in some outward idol, like true faith nope. in oneself. Yeah. Powerful. There's yeah. nothing more powerful, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Have faith in yourself, man. We all need that at this point. Yeah. Yeah. We do. I think we've lost it. We, I think we rejected faith because of what happened 
with many sort of these religious structures. Mm -hmm. I think we rejected all of it because of it. We rejected, yeah. um, particularly faith and things like that, we rejected because we rejected it because of the symbology of what we think we were giving our faith to, what we were surrendering to. Yeah. And actually, to me, it was always about the surrender. It was always about the faith. It's not about who you are giving that faith to or who you are surrendering. It's, it's actually um, to use those sim symbols, to use those structures, those religions, those teachers, those people, those whatever it is, to me, to use that as a jumping off point, to to come to further trust yourself, to come to further see yourself. And it's a mirror. It's a mirror. They're all a mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the Bible, it's a mirror. Yeah. You look at Buddha's teaching, it's a mirror. And we we mistake the mirror and we don't see the mirror of it. And we look to the, you know, the, I don't, can't think of the word, the person, the the symbol, the, yep. the uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, and we miss what is being pointed to, which is right here. Right That's here. what's being pointed to. Yep. It's all different fingers pointing at the moon. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, yeah. Many different fingers, many different labels, many different narratives. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Probably an infinite amount, but they all stand for what's right here. I like to say if, the teacher or teaching does not bring you back to yourself, then run the other way. It's not worth it. It's um, not a true I'm teaching. Thousand percent in agreement with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It is easy to get caught. That's for sure, though. It is easy to get caught in the yeah. symbol. There's very attractive symbols you could say out there. But uh, yeah. Yeah. You're right. It is all just a reflection if you know how to look at it in the right way. Yes. Every teaching yeah. is a reflection and a remembrance, or yeah. it's supposed to be a remembrance for you. It is. You. And actually, even poor teachings and poor, like, so this is what I found. So, you know, you can criticize teachers or whatever if they're not pointing you back. But if you yourself are seated in the heart of that recognition of yeah. they are just a, a mirror for me, even a poor teacher, even a teacher that is pointing, you know, quite poorly, let's say, um, becomes the ability for you to trust yourself even further. Mm. Goes, no, okay, that's not it. And that becomes, at that point, becomes just as useful as the quotes good teachers. Yeah. It's it's all to do with how your, um, what your relationship to that is, I find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> that's very true. Not that not that I'm wishing poor teachers on anyone or anything, <laughs> but um, it's just in my in my life I've seen that I've seen that actually um, those lessons have been just as powerful. When I've gone, oh okay, this there's some red flags here. This is not um, there's something not quite right here. Mm. They've been powerful lessons for me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, yes, it is up to us. The guru is in everything, and essentially, the guru is something that shines you back to you exactly yeah. yeah yeah and that comes in all forms all shapes all sizes yeah, yeah and in that way we go ahead. sorry, sorry. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um i was just gonna say that you know it might get a little tricky because like i said the guru is in everything so yes. we look for the guru in stuff but essentially what that means is that you are in everything <laughs> yes exactly yeah. yeah yeah everything is an opportunity for you to see yourself clearer mm -hmm. yeah amen to that <sighs> well um i think that's a good note to wrap this up at to be honest with you um this went by very <laughs> very fast um everything is an opportunity every moment everyone every single m moment everything that comes about in this moment is an opportunity for us to return to us it's very true it's very true you did say i did say it was complicated but that's the simplicity of it is that no matter what this felt presence the immediate felt presence of the moment the infinite awareness the whatever label you want to use that is always and forever always was always will be 
here and now. And all it takes, I like to say, is just a breath. Just take a breath in. And breathe out. There it is. <laughs> There's the awareness. Yeah. Um, the light shining from within. Yeah. That's it. That's it, everybody. So true. Um, do you have anything else you want to say on that note? Anything you want to get off your chest for the pod? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I think we've, we've covered a lot of ground here today. We did, for sure. Um, well, I thank you for coming on here. I think this was wonderful. You are a very warm soul, very wise soul, and um, I wish you all the best. I hope you keep doing your thing. Thank you. Thank you. Really lovely to meet you here today. I appreciate you inviting me on. Of course. So, um, yeah, thank you to anybody that listened this long, and uh, I'll put all your information down below, and people can get in touch and go check out your wonderful stuff. And that's it. Keep on keeping on. Thank you. Peace and love to you. Peace and love to everybody else. See ya.